Good morning. Welcome to Life of Five with Pastor Ben. Glad you're tuning in today. Sorry I couldn't be live yesterday. I had to drive to Gallup and back. It was a long day. Uh, oh, it was it was a good day though. A great meeting uh, with our circuit and our circuit visitor, Pastor Tim Norton, um, Pastor Luke Shealy from Cortez, Pastor Chris Kellogg from Gallup. Um, so it was it was a good time, and uh, there's movement on our vacancies in our circuit, which is helpful information to know. Something I wanted to share with you also is that I think. I think I have worked it out so that I can do Live for Five next week from Fort Wayne. Um, I'm going to be in Fort Wayne for the SMP, Specific Ministry Pastor, Vicarage Supervisor Training, because I am the Vicarage Supervisor for uh, Joshua Cody in Monta Vista. And so I need to go be trained in... in told what kind of expectations are. But while I'm there, I should be able to do live for five. That's the goal. I will um, update you regardless when I arrive in Fort Wayne. But with that, let's make our beginning this morning in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. From the rising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. Well, if you pull out the YouVersion Bible app, uh, you find that our verse of the day is from Romans chapter 12, verse 2. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. Well, as normal, Paul has laid out a pretty intense gauntlet here in Romans, particularly in chapter 12. There is danger that the Christian may adopt at least some of the world's ways, that we would run with worldly people, especially when we're mocked if we don't conform to the world. Christians sometimes imagine that we can we can go without injury or go without being affected by the world if by running with them, that we can remain spotless, that we can remain unblemished, that it won't drag us into sin to to be among the worldly, to have um more unchristian associations than we have Christian associations. Uh, But this is just not the case. To go and howl with the wolves, uh, to do as the Romans do because we're in Rome, to avoid the abuses of the world and to not lose the Christian uh, character is just not the way the world works. And it's not the way the world, that sinful nature works. Uh, We end up as casualties And it's exceedingly sad. There's this phrase I remember from when I was a child that my mother used to say, and it bothered me a great deal, but it bothered me so much that it stuck with me, and now I understand it better. She would say, because I I had some associations that she didn't care for, and those friends uh, I ended up not spending as much time with or, or stopped spending time with. But the phrase my mother used was, If you take a white glove and you put it in mud, do you get glovey mud? No, you get a muddy glove. And as Christians, that's that's the way that it is. As it is in the case of, of Scripture, the opposite is far more than an opposite. Not... Even outward conformity is what we're asked to do, but we're to have inward transformation. This is 
what it means to present our bodies as living sacrifices, which is the verse exactly preceding this. Let me read to you the first verse of chapter 12. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Okay, so that is laying the case for then what is being said now. Don't be conformed to the world, be transformed. And I, I, the translations do a wonderful job here, and it's really hard often for a translation to convey what's happening in the Greek. But the, the, the word morphos, metamorphosis, transformation, morphos to change, right? So do not be conformed or constrained in your form, but be transformed in your form. And in doing so, you're living out what worship is. What we do with our bodies and our whole bodily life is to be the evidence of a constant inner metamorphosis. Do you see what Paul is doing here? It's absolutely brilliant. And as as God is writing, uh, as God is inspiring the writer to do so. So, while the world wants to distinguish between the body and the mind and the spirit, Scripture won't let us do this. They're one and the same. They're they're not disconnected entities to be understood separately. Instead, in keeping with this. Hebraic and biblical anthropology, Paul speaks to your entire person, to who you are completely. In in various stages of history, different elements that I just broke down have been uh, held in higher or lower esteem to the other. But Paul won't let us pull them apart. And if anything, slams them back together. And so, the way then that we understand this is in direct relation to the Holy Spirit's work in baptism, which connects us, and then we have this baptismal renewal. And it's this is this is why the ideal when someone is baptized is that it's in the worship space. Uh, there, there, there is something to be said for having a private family baptism. It, it, it's not wrong. It's not wrong. But the benefits to having it in corporate worship are so that you and I can continually be renewed like this. So that we saw Coulter on Sunday be baptized as a four-month-old baby. And we remember our baptism and are continually transformed today. That this is a daily renewal, setting aside sin and being renewed in the baptismal graces that have already been there. We're just clinging to them again, clinging to what the Holy Spirit is continually doing. And then that's that's the beauty then of what Paul starts out by saying, this is your this is a living sacrifice and this is your spiritual worship. You're a baptized child of God. Renewed daily. Continue to be transformed into that. Away from the world and and settle into this transformation. Hmm. I know I went a little long there, but it's 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 kind of hard not to get excited about this one. And we didn't even touch the second half of the verse, but let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, the the world begs us to conform to it. And, and and we're mocked and ridiculed when we don't. But you transform us by means of your Holy Spirit and the renewal of the baptismal waters and regeneration we're receiving from you. Help us to daily turn from sin, turn from the worldly conformity, and settle into the transformation that we may be able to share with the world 
We pray all this in your Son's name, Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, have a wonderful day in the Lord. I look forward to seeing you again tomorrow. Oh, we will not be live tomorrow. I have an appointment that was unmovable right at that time, but I'll I'll put together a devotional early for the morning um, that will be a placeholder. So blessings to you. We'll be live Friday and a devotional tomorrow. See you soon.